Back Row Ministry, the world premiere, Mr. Monty coming back at you live and direct. So, I don't like to really talk about stupidity, but uh, somebody brought it up to me, talking about the new Little Mermaid film, and, you know, what I think about Disney as a whole and their uh, new agenda. And it's not a new Disney agenda, it's really an old Disney agenda where they are special people right in front of your face. And when I say special people, you know, we got to term racism we use in America. I don't like to use that term. I like to use the term special people. We got a lot of special people in America. So Disney is one of these special companies. And their new agenda is now to take material that's already written, and put some blackface on it. Let's call it what it is. It's blackface. So they'll take predominantly a character that started off Caucasian and they'll change into black. And then they'll say, oh, see, we're doing something for the black community. Now, these aren't original characters. It's not original characters. We're not seeing anything original from Disney written by black authors, um, written by black creators, produced by black people. I am presented to Disney as new black um, stars or fairy tale characters. Not seeing that. You're seeing Disney just take a character, make them black. And they say, oh, well, see, now you, you know, you can see your representation of your people um, because we made this person black. So we see this with um, the, the, the Peter Pan movie where Tinkerbell is now black for some crazy reason. I have no idea why Tinkerbell needs to be black, but, you know, then they can say, see, um, diverse, diversity, as you know, that's the BS word they love to use. So, we see this with the Little Mermaid movie, with this new so-called diversity, and I call it so-called diversity because it's not true diversity. It's a blackface version of the Little Mermaid, which is unnecessary. The Little Mermaid is a it's a film beloved by children. Young girls love The Little Mermaid because they love the story of The Little Mermaid. They love the love story. That's what they love. And really, the, the thing about The Little Mermaid, when my daughter watched it, that, you know, upset her was the relationship between Ariel and her father. And her father not wanting her to stand out and search new things. And her father being so bitter about, you know, the, 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 the world of, above the outside of the water. So that was the thing she always touched on, that relationship with the father and Ariel. That, that's the one that got to her the most. But the other part was just the love affair. So there's really no reason to change the characters in the story because for young girls, these characters are relatable because they're girls. They're girls, and I think sometimes we get it twisted through our special people society of agendas that girls don't relate to girls unless they are black girls. Very untrue. That's like saying a Caucasian girl can't relate to the to a story of a black girl. Very untrue. Girls relate to stories about girls. They sit down and watch them, and they can relate to them, and you show it to them, they're going to relate to those stories. So, of course, girls relate to the story of Ariel. They relate to that story. They love the story. And all girls like mermaids, most of them. So, there's no reason to change any characters in the story. You want a live version? Make it a live version. <coughs> But Disney wants to make a live version because they need money. They need to draw the dollar in. And they have this new idea that if we have black live characters and we throw a black character in there, then we can get the black audience. We can get the black dollar. We can get black people to come see these movies. Black people is already watching the movies. Young black girls are already watching the movies. Young black girls would have went to see a live version of Little Mermaid. didn't matter who you put in the role. But Disney takes a beloved character who these children know the character and they know 
Ariel has this red hair, this flaming red hair, and all this other stuff that you know they like about Ariel. And you take that away. And you give them what you feel they need to see. And you say, well, we're doing this for who? Who are you doing it for? Are you doing it for black black people? Are you doing it for Caucasian people? Who are you doing it for? What's your agenda here? What's your move here when these children have already grown up on Ariel? They already seen Ariel in The Little Mermaid. It was a cartoon. They could create whatever they wanted to. They could become Ariel if they wanted to. They could go through Ariel's struggle if they wanted to. They can reenact that. But Disney has to create fake diversity. And I call it fake diversity because nothing about it is real. And it's really true live racism. Disney's been great for doing this. Remember Pocahontas? Their first true live racism story. Now, how do they do this? Well, first of all, they give you a woman of color. And you see this being a new trend in our society. They give you women of color or people of color or person of color. And instead of giving you a healthy relationship within that ethnic group. So you can see TV where there's a white family. Caucasian family on TV. They have a regular Caucasian family. Children and everything. You can't get that in Hollywood when it comes to black people anymore because anytime you see people of color, they have to be in some form of interracial relationship. Now, I'm not saying that those relationships are not healthy. There, there are many people in interracial relationships, but we've come a long way from the healthy relationship of the Cosby show. The healthy relationship of the family from Family Matters. We've come a long way from those type of relationships because it's no longer deemed healthy for people of color to be in a relationship with each other in Hollywood. They have to be either in a homosexual relationship or in a relationship with someone who is not of their own ethnicity. Just watch a couple of movies, you'll see what I'm saying. That's just the new trend in Hollywood. People of color are either gay in the movie or they're in, a, they're in an interracial relationship. You don't see healthy relationships amongst people of color anymore in Hollywood. Yet, they tell you that Hollywood is diverse. So what happened to people of color being in relationships with people of color in Hollywood? What's wrong with that? And they use us as always because they always use people of color to pass evil agendas or certain agendas or steer you in certain ways. So what's the new agenda? Steering children? Well, we're going to steer these young black girls over to Caucasian man. Why? Because, of course, we're in a period where the Caucasian man knows his race is dying off. So he has to do what he can do to reproduce. He knows his women don't want to reproduce anymore. So he's going to people of color. That's why you see Meghan Markle married to the prince. They're going to keep that bloodline pure. And they're going to use the blood as the purest, the blood of people of color. So here we go with the aerial tobacco, this so-called diversity movie. You watch the movie, you see she has a Hispanic father, which makes no sense. Uh, you see the Rainbow Coalition down there where uh, she's supposed to stay, which makes no sense. If she's supposed to be this person of color. Where's the father that is the, the man of color? Because the, the, the man of color or the black man does not exist in, in Disney. You don't see any men of color in these movies. And that's for a reason. And then, of course, now you take the theme of Ariel, her wanting to see the above world and be in a world of humans, which is the ultimate theme. Her being a mermaid, want to be in a world of humans. But now you put a twist on it. Her being a black mermaid wanted to be in a world of Caucasian humans. And she wants to be part of that world now. She wants to be in an integrated society. She wants to be accepted by the Caucasian masses. You see the little spin that Disney likes to put on it? And people are just, well, that's innocence. No, it's just a little spin they put on it to see if they can get away with it. And then to add insult to injury, she's chasing after the white man. So the black woman, of course, the black man is not good enough for Ariel. So she's chasing after the, 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 the Caucasian male. 
because the Caucasian male is the is the man of her dreams. A little twist by Disney, just to add insult to injury to people of color. Black men aren't good enough. Black men can't have a princess. Black men can't be discoverers. Of course, many men of color during that period were most of your discoverers. But no, we can't have a man of color as the discoverer that you know, discovers Ariel. You know, can't have a, a Spanish conquistador of color to be the you know no no. It's got to be a Caucasian male. Like right? you know, that's what they see because that's her. That's the man who's going to make her a princess. Just like Meghan Markle, you know, she's going to be a princess. She doesn't mean the man of color. And that's what they do. That's Disney. That's diversity. That's diverse. That's the diversity they're selling. You don't need a man of color. A man of color can't make you a princess. Only this man can make you a princess. You want to be part of his world. See the sickness of Disney. And they try to sell that amongst all their other agendas to children. The LGBTQ agenda. Trying to sell that to kids. Over-sexualizing children. You don't sexualize a child. You let children be children. As they come to certain parts in their development, then you have certain conversations. But a five-year-old does not need to be over-sexualized. There was a guy at ODU that tried to have a debate about the uh, changing of the pedophile title to people who love young people, making that okay. And that's Disney's agenda. Making pedophilia okay. It's okay to have sex with a six-year-old. That's how sick some of these companies are. And they sell these agendas. And then they say, oh, no, that's not what we're trying to do. So why do you need to over-sexualize your platform? Why do you need to create a platform and say it's diverse when it's not really diverse? Where's the diversity when... You don't have a cast that's all people of color. Isn't that a diverse cast? If you're trying to sell the theme of, you know, people of color, shouldn't it be a theme of all people of color? Shouldn't that be the theme? But that's not the theme you're trying to sell. So, really watching Disney and the things they do and the changes they make and things they implement, are they really doing this? For a reason, not diversity or or inclusion, or they're just doing something to sell their sick agendas and continue to uh, be racist. Say who 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 is or who creates the princess? What man is better than this man? You know, and continue to sell the agenda that hey, black woman, you need a white man. I hate to put it that way. But if I wrote that, let's say I wrote that, hey, white women, you need a black man. Oh, they'll behead me. They would behead me if I wrote anything to even suggest that. But Disney feels they can do it and get away with it on a daily basis. This is Mr. Markey, Black Road Ministry, Black Road Ministry, World Premier.